What is going on YouTube? We're on the X-Room here. Welcome to the channel. Today I'm out here at Arizona Kawasaki KTM and Triumph of Tucson and I'm here to ride a very, very special bike. Some would say it's almost a limited edition bike because, well, it's what it is. Check that out. So come on inside and let's check out what they have in the showroom and then we'll go over the bike that we're getting to test out today. We got a 2020 Triumph 765. Good to go. And I gotta follow this gentleman here. Uh, Triumph 765 Moto 2. And while I get to follow this fine gentleman from Arizona Kawasaki KTM Triumph here in Tucson, uh, we're gonna do a little trek. Now, from what I'm told, it's nothing crazy it's not very long however i get to ride a one of 765 bike now this particular model is 270 of 765 which is pretty awesome we're out here at arizona kawasaki ktm triumph of tucson i'm out here with this awesome 2020 triumph daytona 765 moto freaking two there's 765 of them in the u.s this is number 270 this opportunity doesn't come along often because it's a limited bike and these guys are gracious enough to let me take it out for a spin and I do mean a very, very quick spin. But I tell you what, immediate first impressions, it's so comfortable. So let's go with immediate impressions. How does this bike feel under me? <laughs> the seat is very squishy. It's very comfortable. I mean, just right now, I am digging how this seat feels. Look how thick the seat is, it's so soft and so supple. You kind of think you're riding in this super awesome, fast, lazy boy. Now, this thing has 128 horsepower and 59 foot-pounds of torque, but the way that that torque comes on, it's effortless. You just twist the throttle and from like 1,000 RPM all the way up to 5,000, it's just, it's just easy, it comes alive. This three-cylinder motor is so buttery smooth. Oh, baby. Yeah, the drive out of first, second, third gear, low end, like, where are we at? 2,000 and above? Wow. The low to mid-range grunt on this motorcycle is fantastic. So this has a quick shift to auto blipper. And I tell you what, the quick shift to auto blipper is very, very smooth. And this is the brand new bike, which, you know, to be smooth on a brand new bike is kind of impressive because they normally are a little clunky, first thing. Now, I wish I could take this on some turns. Oh, man, the punch out of first gear is incredible. And this being a new bike, the quick shifter was amazing on it. You think a new bike has got to be broken in, but not with this. She just goes up and down, no problem, on throttle, off throttle, three quarter, one quarter. You know, it doesn't matter what throttle position you're in, that quick shifter just works. You look at all this carbon fiber and you're like, oh man, this thing's gorgeous. But really though, what is this? <laughs> it's this weird looking plastic. It's not really all inspiring when you look at all the carbon fiber that's on here. And I tell you what, the ride is incredibly supple. It, you know, this is a standard suspension, meaning that there's no electronics to it. And the ride quality is impressive. The brakes, uh, I like the brakes. They are Brembo's. Granted, they are a little bit smaller rotor. I think they are 310 millimeter. So uh, a little smaller, but still not all that bad. And, you know, for around town, they will do just fine. And they got plenty of bite, plenty of bite. 
Now you know me, I'm always such a heckler for brakes. I'm always so anal retentive about how they feel. And some bikes surprise the hell out of me, some of them don't. This bike feels great. The brakes have that bite that you want, but not so much that it, it lurches you forward. It's actually a really good gradual progression when you actually squeeze these brakes. Oh, by the way, the rear brake also works really great, which is another one of my pet peeves because it always decides to not work half the time. The clutch feels so good. Engagement. Oh man, 4,000 to 5,000. Yeah, that is very good. I only got to get on it so minimally, but between 4,000 and 5,000 RPM, this bike just picks up. Now on the lever front, the clutch control over here, you know, it's cabled, so it's got a really good feel to it. When you want to let the clutch out, you can feel it start to bite and grab and go. And it takes literally this fast to figure out how much clutch to add and how much to take away. Now the gauge cluster, it shows this awesome Moto 2 as it starts up. It looks really pretty. And then it turns on and you're like, oh, really? Okay, uh, it's got a miles per hour, but the rev counter is kind of odd. It goes from like 2000, it goes out this way. And it's kind of tricky if you're looking at it to really guess where you're at. It's very unorthodox from what you're used to seeing. And it takes a little bit of time to calibrate your eye to what the RPM's showing. Granted, there's obviously a butt dyno, you can feel the RPM, but if you want that visual representation, it's a little up, it's a little tricky. Now being this 2020 model, this thing's obviously steeped with the tons of electronics and everything else that are on a bunch of different riding modes. I'm not gonna go over all of them, but I will touch on something very kind of odd about this motorcycle. Most bikes that have traction control, you can change how much intervention they have. Whereas this bike, it's either the preset that comes with it, whether it's race, sport, or wet, or it's on or off. There's no varying levels. You can't tune the traction control, which is kind of odd. Most bikes, you can actually cycle through whether you want a ton of intervention or off. This bike is literally on, off, or whatever the preset is. You can't go in there and change it. So those of you that don't like to have a ton of traction control on, you might find this a little annoying. I know it was short and sweet, but you can tell a lot very, very quickly. And uh, whew, what a bike. <laughs> you know, it obviously you want more time, but sometimes you just don't need it. There's, there's so many good points about this motorcycle I hope to touch on here. Now, while even though I didn't have a ton of time on this motorcycle, I can still take it on some turns. I can still feel, you know, the weight of it or lack thereof. You know, it's got a dry weight of 363 pounds, which really doesn't feel that much. You can kind of equate it to an MV Augusta F3RC as far as how light it feels and how nimble it is. So. Get it up on the mountain, get it on the racetrack, you probably really mess around with it and feel the chassis. It feels so precise and so direct. When you lean it in, it goes the way you want it. You don't have to fight anything. There's not a ton of mass here, so it's easy to flick in and out. And like I said, I only got to do a few turns in it and they weren't crazy speed, but from those turns, you can definitely feel the lightness of it. This thing has a slip on arrow exhaust. I don't think it really does a whole lot. My wife, heard me fly by and she said it sounded like it was purring a little bit which is kind of cool and kind of uh, I don't know maybe it needs a little more bite maybe it needs a full aero exhaust and really open up the sound of this thing for a full package of $17,500 What's on here is really freaking good. You know, it's got steel braided brake lines. I got a V4 Speciale. I have many other Ducatis that are well over 30 grand that don't have steel braided brake lines. Those little touches are what make this bike a very, very good package. If you are interested in this motorcycle, it is here at Arizona Kawasaki KTM Triumph of Tucson. Contact Bruce, he's a great guy, a great sales staff, and their service department's also top notch. So hit them up for this awesome Triumph Daytona 765 Moto 2 motorcycle. With that, I hope you all have a good one. I'm out.